Well, hello, everybody, on this beautiful Wednesday. At least it is where I happen to be in New Jersey today. Beautiful outside. Excited to be here to talk to you at the most amazing time of year. Time for us to transform our firms utilizing integrated document and practice management solutions. And we are here, if you don't mind, I see everybody's coming in here, pop into the Q&A, the question tab there, and just let me know that you're here, where you're from, that you can hear me, see me, you'll only see me in the beginning, because, you know, who knows, I might have to, I got a little bit of a cold, might have to blow my nose, who knows, you don't want to watch any of that stuff, you just want to learn the information we got. So if you would just pop in there, let me know you can hear me loud and clear into the Q&A or into the chat, if that's better for you. All right, Ocean City Owen. That's what we're going to call him, Ocean City Owen. Ken Bostrom, one of my favorite guys. Ken is a great man. No, known Ken for a long time. I hope I see him next week. And I will give a shout out to Nick Basha. Basha and Basha is present today, watching, learning, filling buckets with money. That's what Nick and I always say. That's what we love to do. So anyway, I'm, I'm so excited for you all to be here and I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get right into the meat of what we're talking about. Like I said, I'm going to shut off my camera, but don't you worry. I am still here. No worries at all. Okay. Transforming our firm, integrated document and practice management solutions. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Dawn Brolin. I am the founder of Team Brolin, designated motivator, which is what I'm here to do for you all today and to help fire you up in making those changes with your firm. I'm also the president of the Accounting Quarterstone Foundation, a very exciting organization that was formed about a year ago uh, where we uh, support scholarships for people, accounting professionals to go to in-person learning. And as a matter of fact, uh, we sent three to Scaling New Heights. We've got three going to QuickBooks Connect really excited to be able to provide those people who have never been to in-person learning with the ability to go uh, with with people that you know and financially to support people ceo of powerful accounting inc out of wyndham connecticut i've been in business since 1999 i have done it all wrong and all right up and down sideways you name it and i really feel like i've got my thumb on the pulse right now of how to run a firm efficiently and run it productively and more importantly profitably really important. Anyway, so that's Don Brolin, just in case some of you have not uh, seen me before, so you know that I am a practitioner just like you all. Today, we've got some learning objectives, of course, and we've got some polling questions. If you want your seat, you've got to answer your polling questions. Um, why I connected document and practice management solutions, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about that. We're also going to talk about insider tips okay, to maximize the benefits of the integration. Something that I've always wanted is to have great seamless integrations with all of my tools, all of my tech stack, and talk about some workflow improvements, cost savings that you can achieve with an integrated tech stack. And of course, we're gonna talk about Smart Vault and Financial Sense as we go through this, because those are the two tools that I'm using to maximize the benefits of this integration. Now, by leveraging these integrated systems and streamlining your processes, you will spend more time effectively avoid burnout. Anyone out there feel like, oh my goodness gracious, I am starting to be so burned out. I know that I have been there before and I knew I needed to make a change. I wanna be able to better serve my clients from this upcoming tax season and beyond. Now, year after year, I've, I've been given these webinars for a long time. And I like to tell people, as you see the progression of how things move forward, you're going to make changes to your processes, changes to your integrated systems. Sometimes you're going to find that the, the system that you have and the process you have works real well. Don't break it. Don't break a great process, but always look to maximize and leverage integrated systems. So if you've got a solution that you're using and it's not integrated in any way with all of your other systems, that's when you need to start looking. You know, you may have a great system, a great process, but it's not integrated. And so you're ending up doing a lot more, I call it administrative time, non-billable time, not that I'm billing by the hour because I'm not, but understanding that using those integrated systems and streamlining those processes are gonna help you serve your clients better, make your team more productive and more profitable. So 
as we think about working through the ultimate way to supercharge your workflow, okay, ahead of tax season, now's the time to make some changes. So for me, historically, I had, and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about SmartFault and Financial Sense because histor I had a different workflow product just about eight months ago. And so we were looking because we were having to do workarounds to connect SmartVault with our tax, our workflow tool, our project management tool. And so we were, we were having to do that in a much more manual process. And as we had taken a look at Financial Sense, one of the key reasons that we switched to Financial Sense was because of the connection with SmartVault. Now, you know, we can make workarounds and we can do those kind of things, but when you can leverage a system that is already integrated, you're gonna be able to manage your tasks, your data and documents with SmartVault, but you're gonna also, for your time and profit margins in financial sense, but at the end of the day, having the automatic integration is the key that we are like striving for, I guess I would say, okay? Now, <clears throat> we know tax season is already stressful. We already know, for well, it doesn't matter, by the way, whether you do tax returns or you're handling bookkeeping or client accounting services. It really doesn't matter because you're still, tax season is still a busy season or I call it a productive season when you're in the accounting industry. So knowing that you're gonna have a connection between the two, you're gonna take that workflow to the next level. Avoiding the need to have outside of your workflow systems that don't integrate. Now, what can you do with this smart vault and financial sense integration? You can easily import or link your clients from smart vault to financial sense. What's awesome is financial sense will help you make that happen. So if you're not on smart vault now, it is the time to set up smart vault period. They will help onboard you. They will help you organize it. And then when you, when you work with financial sense, they will help connect and link your clients to smart vault and direct automatic integration. Now, you'll be able to access SmartVault from Financial Sense. So usually when I open my browser, and I don't know how you guys work within your systems, when I open my browser, I have my automatic things that come up and pop up in my browser. So when I first launch my Google Chrome, Financial Sense pops up, SmartVault pops up, a couple of other things pop up, so that I have, those things are just automatically opened. I don't want to have to go click to open things. It's just, I'm, you know, I used to say I'm trying not to hand key things, but now I'm trying to not at all enter, like use my mouse. I'm trying to not click things. That's like so funny. That's what we've been trying to do. We're going to be able to automatically create clients in SmartVault when a client is created in financial sense. So there's another key element to not having to enter things twice. Now, some of you may be utilizing Pro Series or LaCert with SmartVault, and that's great. If you do that and that's how you create your SmartVault folders and you like and you have a system for that, don't change it. But if you don't have an automatic creation of SmartVault folders, then you'll be able to use Financial Sense to do that. Really, really exciting stuff. Now, <clears throat> before I go too much further, because we are focusing on integrated applications, I wanted to just kind of show you what I call a home run tech stack. I call it the team role and field of dreams. And if, if you know anything about me, um, I am passionate about college softball. And I actually volunteer coach college softball during tax season, which some people think I'm a crazy person, which is true, right? So at the end of the day, for me, I want to make sure I have my tools in place and my efficiency set so that I can spend more time on the ball field. Now, all of my systems integrate, the ones that can. Uh, tools like RC Reports doesn't necessarily integrate with anything, but it's a great uh, reasonable compensation tool. And But otherwise, otherwise, pretty much everything here integrates. Now, somebody put in the Q&A, and I love the questions. Keep them coming. I try to pay attention to the Q&A panel as I go through so I can answer your questions. Smart Vault to Citrix, somebody asked about, Don asked about comparing Smart Vault to Citrix share file. Now, the reason why I use Smart Vault is because it integrates with my tax software. And now, thank you, it integrates with my project management workflow tool, Financial Sense. Citrix share file is kind of a standalone product 
there's not really a direct uh, direct integration with other tools, um, which I, which I find to be cumbersome, because we use Lacert and we we do tax returns. The automatic printing from Lacert to Smart Vault is a game changer for tax pros. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, I have testimonials. John Coleman is one of them, who was able to go to his kids' spring baseball games because of the time that he saved utilizing Lacert to Smart Vault. So the way I, when I select a tool, so you're saying Citrix share file, I want to select a tool that is going to integrate directly with either a, a highly likely a tax software and where I can have all permanent document storage sitting in there, but also the ability to simply click a button and print all of my tax returns into folders where my clients can see them anytime, anywhere. If I'm using Citrix share file, I have to print, I have to make sure I choose the right file. I have, there's like a whole step printing to PDF and then uploading and it's a, it would be a nightmare for me. So that's why we use Smart Vault and our clients love it. There's a couple of other reasons we're going to talk about as we go. There's a bunch of reasons, but there's a couple more that we're going to go through. So I always like to show the home run tech stack because it is the field of dreams at Powerful Accounting. All right, move on to the next slide. Now, I'm going to talk you a little bit through this. I, we recorded this little video because sometimes trying to screen share and do all of that's a little bit of a nightmare. So you're able to access Smart Vault from the client's integrations section. But guess what, everybody? You can now do it from projects. So when you set up a project in financial sense, you're gonna be able to open up that project and go and directly click the link to get into their folder. So here you're seeing us click on the clients, click into a client, and we integrated Smart Vault. When you click that integration, it's gonna open up their file, and you'll notice it brings you right to their particular area within Smart Vault. That is a game changer. No more need to open up, not that it's really cumbersome to just open up Smart Vault and to search for a client because it's not, but having the direct integration brings you directly to that client where you can, you can do doc requests, get, request their documents, you can go into their vaults, you can see they've uploaded documents for let's say tax season if you're a tax preparer. Our clients will upload their documents to Smart Vault because we've been using it since 2011. So being able to have one place where people go in. Now, if people aren't used to Smart Vault, you can send them a client request out of financial sense to obtain documents, you can do that. But we always make sure that the documents land in their Smart Vault folder because that's where everything is permanently stored per requirements, how long we have to store them for, and the clients have access to it anytime, anywhere. But I love the fact that we can simply click on an integration button click on Smart Vault and open up Smart Vault. Really powerful tool. So we're gonna open up our first polling question here. Let's see, let's get the polling questions here. All right, first polling question. Are you using a secure document management platform? Yes, no, I am, but I don't like it. And so I wanna talk a little bit through when you're selecting a project management platform. This is so important. Oh, I have to launch it. Hold on. I'm sorry. <clears throat> really important as we're going through when we're making our decisions on making a, a choice for management platform, a, a document management platform, that we have those things that we must have when it comes to the document management. I know for me, for document management, I've got to have a tool that's integrated, period. Now, as a tax preparer, I need to make sure that I have that. OK, I have a way to print those tax returns directly into a folder structure. And we're going to talk about folder structures as we get towards the end. But choosing that document management platform and, and Don, I really appreciate that question about Citrix. Um, what, what the way I look at it again, it's just got to be uh, got to be integrated. And yes, Don, I have a smart vault set up as a virtual drive on my computer. So I, it's a C drive on your computer. There's a an amazing what's called a connected desktop as well but yes i have and i call it the z drive so on my computer we have a what we call it a map drive right so yes you can have a map drive with smart vault right on your computer um and then you have the connected desktop which i'm going to show you a little bit a little bit later what is so great about that so i'm going to go ahead you've got 85 percent of you have voted just collecting responses looks like 68 percent are using a secure document platform good for you 
I hope it's working for you. I hope it's integrated. I hope it's smart fault personally. Some of you don't. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this poll in five, four, three, two, and one. And I love to share the results because 65% said yes, 20% do not. And some, it's 15% say they are, but they don't like it. And, I'm, and I would say to you again, think about what are the things you have to have? And for me, I have to have an integrated tool. And this Smart Vault is an integrated tool, gives me a map drive, gives me something called a connected desktop, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And it, it really does give everything that I need. So I just need to pop this back open again. All right, here we are, moving on. So I'm gonna walk you through, because you're kind of like, well, how do you use this, right? So back in the little video of Financial Sense and how you can open up Smart Vault, we're utilizing Financial Sense for all of our workflow. So onboarding a tax client has a, has a workflow. What has to happen? There's certain things that have to happen. We do monthly accounting services. What are the things that have to happen for each client? And some of them are different. Some of, some of their processors are a little bit different. Maybe they're using Square. Maybe they're a client who uses Square. We're gonna make sure that we utilize a tool called Bookkeep to pull those transactions out of Square, dump them into QBO, which by the way, that saves you an amazing amount of time, right? An amazing amount of time that we don't even have to deal with managing those transactions at all. Then we have advisory services. We have moved 100%. We are on our path to be 100% advisory services. That's a course that I plan on writing. It is an amazing experience to go through and tell your clients, I want to be your trusted advisor, which means I, there are things I need to do for you. If you are an S corporation, I need to be doing reasonable compensation, right? All right, let's go, Marie. Go ECSU Warriors. You know it, Marie. Oh, I love it. Your daughters are ECSU alum. I love Eastern Connecticut State University, man. Watch us as we have an amazing season coming up this spring. By the way, I don't call it tax season anymore. I call it softball season because that's just how I roll. So... There's some, I'm gonna give you some examples on how we work through this. What my whole goal is that you are able to change the way you're doing things now so that as you move into a new year, which is coming up, that you're able to make these changes to prepare yourself for a successful season to come up as you come through, okay? That's the goal. Oh, we're gonna give you another polling question here. Because well, I'm really curious, these questions are really for me to understand you guys and what you're up to, but what is your biggest struggle with your onboarding clients right now. So you got clients that are onboarding, right? You got new clients coming in. What is exactly your process? I'm gonna take a quick drink of water here while you answer that question. All right, we're ready back and rock and roll here. So what is your biggest struggle? I know our struggle was consistency. We used to make exceptions for people. I would even step in the mix and be like, oh, I'll take care of it. I'll just get you set up in Smart Vault. You can upload your prior year tax return and not worry about it. Tracy would go bananas because it wasn't consistent. I had to step out of the way and I would encourage you. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at your, your, your answers here. Some of you don't have a process. Some of you don't have the right technology in place. I totally got you. I so have you today. I don't have enough staff to manage it. I totally respect that. So what we need to do for you guys is make sure we give you consistency today. Consistency will cause the administrative side of onboarding new clients reduce significantly. I used to be 65% admin time. And can you believe that? As the most highest billable person in the firm, I was the one doing 65% of the admin time. I took myself out of the way. We set a process and we don't break the process. We don't make exceptions. Everyone follows the same thing. And if they don't like it, they don't get to play with us. They don't get to play on the team rolling field of dreams. So we're going to close this poll down in about five, four, three, two, one. And I just want to share the results because it's an interesting mix of you guys. A lot of you don't have a process and you don't have the right technology in place or you, you are at the right place at the right time right now. And I hope that you, you know, not just watch this webinar, but take action after it's over. And 9% of you have a perfect onboarding process and good for you because you know what? 
that's half the battle is making sure you have a great onboarding process. I'm gonna go ahead and hide those results and pull back up my slides. All right. One of the ways to think about is reverse engineering your workflow based on what you need. Let me stop there. What you need, not what the, necessarily what the client thinks they need and the way the client thinks they wanna work with you. It is the way we need, what we need from the client and the best way for them to work with us, right? We're gonna collaborate with them, but again, we're setting the rules, people. We're not doing it the opposite way. We are not requiring the clients to dictate how this relationship is gonna go. This is not the way it's gonna work. And I, tell, I can say for me, that happened for a long, long time, right? Really at the end of the day, oh, you're so cute. Don, you're amazing, man. I hope I get to meet you someday. Um, so as far as the way we're working with the clients and how we're going to onboard them, it's just, again, it's our way. And I'm going to talk a little bit in a minute, Buck, about, uh, ignition and smart ball and financial sense. Cause I'm going to give you a little example as we work through our onboarding process. So a client's going to call us up. We're going to do, okay, we're going to just see, I just want to see, let me answer, ask this question before I move on. Just cause again, I want to know my audience. It's really important to me. So are you using a cloud-based practice management platform now. I'm going to go ahead and launch this polling question. Where am I? Here I am. Here we go. Launch. Are you using a cloud-based practice management platform? Because now I'm going to have the answers to the questions that I need as I walk through this workflow. Okay. If you're using cloud-based practice management, and I'm not talking about Excel. This doesn't include Excel, everybody. That's not a practice management platform. I actually, I have Dawn's dugout and you'll, you'll be able to register for that for December. But I was in the dugout on Monday and I had two people who were using, who had like seven employees and they were using Excel for their practice management platform. That, that's not a thing. So um, if you're using Excel, don't say yes. So a cloud-based practice management platform. So I'm gonna close this poll real quick here. Almost all of you have voted. So again, just trying to get a feel for my my people here. What I what I can definitely say is I've got a group of people here who don't have a consistent onboarding process, and I'm going to give you one today. And I'm even going to give you the tools you need to do it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this poll. It looks like 43% of you do not have a cloud-based management platform. So I'm going to close the poll in five, four, three, two. One. So I'm gonna. I'm not gonna share the results on this one, but I can tell you half of you do not, and some of you do, but you don't like it. And that was where I was in the spring of this year. I was like, I need to change what I'm doing here. I've got to be able to work with a tool that's gonna work with all of my other, my, all of my other tools, right? So we're gonna go ahead and look at, so okay, Josephine, just so you know, you have to log into Smart Vault each time. You just keep the Smart Vault browser open like I said in the beginning. When I open up my browser, it automatically opens, I log in and I stay logged in. Of course, unless I leave my desk or something like that. But Smart Vault has to be open when you click on the integration uh, for it to automatically bring you to that client. So Smart Vault will have to be open on your browser. All right, <coughs> excuse me in my cough today. Okay, here's an example. We're going to talk about onboarding with tax preparation. We need to collect client documents. What do we need from them? We need their prior year tax returns, right? We want to see what exactly their tax return looks like. We can't price a tax return if we don't know what the scope of the return, at least in the prior year, looks like, okay? We're going to use e-signature for signing documents, and we're going to talk through that as we go through here. Okay. So in Smart Vault for us, this is this is a, a, a screenshot from my Smart Vault. There's something called a firm vault, right? So there's a there's a firm vault and there's a tax client vault. So in our firm vault, they don't get they don't get into the, the actual client vault until they accept my quote, until they are actually a client. So we put them in a folder called potential tax clients. So Tracy will come in here. And as you can see for tax returns 2023, tax returns 2022, she'll go ahead and set a folder up for those clients in a potential tax client folder. And she will utilize uh, request docs to send them a link for them to upload 
their tax return to the folder so that I can then go ahead and do a quote. Again, this happens for every single tax client. There are no exceptions whatsoever. Now, again, I have Tracy doing this. I'm not touching anything. I'm not touching anything until I'm gonna give a quote. And so <clears throat> what will happen is Tracy will book an appointment in my calendar. She's gonna set that with a link to Smart Vault so that I can easily go ahead and access the tax return. I don't wanna have to go into Smart Vault, go click on the firm vault, click on the potential client vault, click and find the client and then click. Now I've clicked like five times. I don't wanna do that. So Tracy, as our process, new client quote. And that's the, in every single appointment in my calendar where I'm gonna give a quote says, new client quote, all caps, why? Because if she, if if I if I can identify it as a new client quote, I know what I have to do. I always want a description in my appointments. I want to know exactly what am I doing during this period of time. So what she's going to do is she's going to put in the notes. Now again, the reason my why my onboarding process is the way it is is there's reasons behind it. The reason why Tracy talks to the client first and why Tracy obtains a copy of the tax return is because historically Don Brolin has had a problem and still does in many ways of pleasing people. I'll get on a phone call with a client and potentially there's a sick child, potentially there's a sick spouse. You know, there've been issues, there's been problems, there's monetary issues. And Dawn Brolin would feel so bad, she would discount the tax return because she felt bad for people. Now there's a time and place to give away your work. There's a time and place to give back. There always will be, but in your normal course of business, you have to keep the emotion out of it as much as you can. So Tracy will book it, and you know what she does? Tracy's intelligent. She knows how to talk to people. She will talk to the client, hey, and she'll put the notes in, Dawn, new client, has a Schedule C, one rental property, really nice people, we should enjoy working with them. Because I tell Tracy, if you talk to a new potential client and they are not nice people, we don't want them. And I would know at that point, either I will go ahead and email the client and say, I you know, I know you talked to Tracy, you upload your return. Unfortunately, we're not prepared. We're not gonna be able to do your return this year. I'm not afraid to do that. If they are not nice to Tracy, they ain't getting in the door. That's just the way I look at it, right? So she goes ahead, puts that in there. Now I know what I'm up against. I click on the Smart Vault link. And then from there, I go ahead and I open up Ignition. And this is the tool I've been using for the last year to prepare my quotes. And so for me, again, being as efficient as possible, and that's the key, is that you sometimes you have to keep yourself out of the way, okay? And I know somebody uh, had put, I don't have enough staff to be able to handle things. An administrative person, by the way, she's virtual, she lives in Florida, she doesn't, she's never worked in my office before. I don't need her in my office and I need her to work as whenever she needs to work in order to get the job done. I don't have her, I don't, I don't care necessarily when she's around as long as she's taking care of things. But getting somebody in there is key. Now, I will say, because of my integrations with QBO, QBO with Financial Sense, Financial Sense with Smart Vault, Ignition, which connects to financial sense, which can connect to QBO. When I go and I choose to do my, I go ahead and to create my quote for my client. I have templates all in place, Ignition, that's a whole nother webinar, but I've got it all in place, but because they're all integrated, when I go to create the quote, the clients are already in Ignition. The syncing with Ignition allows for the clients to auto-populate in Ignition from either financial sense or QBO, whichever way you decide to link your, your tools. And so that's super powerful. So then I go ahead and I send the quote out. Now I will tell you from a best practice perspective and I watch a lot of Facebook groups. I watch, I do more watching than I do like entering, you know, an answer or whatever, because I like to see what people are doing. And I've noticed a lot of people getting burned on money. I see a lot of people concerned about accounts receivable. We need to eliminate that problem. And so with my process, mandatory starting for tax this next tax season, and actually we started it in May as a best practice. We made some changes to our process in May. People have to prepay for their tax return. Now, people are gonna to say to me, well, Brolin, you're gonna have them prepay, but what if something changes? No problem. You can do a one-off bill in Ignition 
send it to them as a change uh, as a change order. You know, contractors have change orders. Why can't we have change orders, right? And so I find that if I understand, right, if I understand what's going to happen and the client understands and what's great about ignition is you can send a video, you can explain what's going on. People, people have typically have zero questions at the end of the day, but they've got to sign their quote before they're getting into our permanent systems. They can't get into all of our stuff until they accept the quote and pay up front. And so from there, what Tracy's going to do. So we should, they accept the quote, you know, party, this is awesome. All right. We got the quote accepted. They made their payment. They're now part of the team Brolin family. And so in they get to go. I'm just going to call for a quick second. So I created my own organizer. And why did I do that? Because I don't like the organizers that are within the tax software. It doesn't even matter what tax software. They're bulky. If you are printing tax organizers and mailing them out, stop it. Stop it as of today. I should have made that a polling question. If you are sending out client organizers by mail, stop doing that. You're wasting your admin's time. You're wasting money when you can do things all digitally. So we are making, there's some new and upcoming technology in one of my applications that's gonna change the way I do this process. But for now, this is still the way we do it today. We send them a client organizer through Smart Vault. Okay, so we do, we, and through Smart Vault to DocuSign. We use DocuSign, which integrates with Smart Vault. Like, Hello integrations, like it's our life, it's the way we should live. So we go ahead and we send them this organizer. If you go to dawnbrolin.com and you click on the get free resources button, you can have, you, I have them all up there. You guys can take them, customize them. I put them in words so you can utilize them and put your own spin on it. But there's certain questions that we ask within, the, within this tax organizer. We don't necessarily bring to light what they had last year, but there's some technology that I'm going to be utilizing for next tax season that I can't announce yet, but we'll be utilizing that will actually pull that information right out of the cert. And that's going to be real, a real exciting team role and tech stack change for the upcoming tax season. But for now, this is how we do it. And so having the tax organizer asking the questions that we really need to, all pertinent information. Now, initially, this is a new taxpayer. We still send organizers out, obviously, to our existing clients. They're not going to fill in their date of birth. They're not going to fill in their social security number because we already have that information. The date of birth and the social security number, by the way, do not change. And probably 99.999% of the time, the date of birth and social security number doesn't change. Date of birth never changes. Driver's license might, might have an expiration, but the new clients have to obviously pull all of that out. Returning clients do not. Now, they fill out the organizer, we're ready to rock and roll. Here's a great tip for those of you who are setting up your, you are a tax preparer, and some of you may be sole prop, so I get that. You may not be able to have that. Even as a sole prop, everybody, I would like to see you hiring even a part-time assistant to be able to do some of this administrative work that I'm showing you here today because when that organizer comes back and they're part of the team, Tracy's going to add them as a new client in LACERT. Yep, I said the actual admin is going to go into LACERT and she is going to enter their information from the client organizer. Now you notice I have only sent a quote so far. That's the only thing I've done. And it really doesn't take me 15 minutes to do a quote, but we, we a lot for that. Maybe I gotta go get a snack or something. So I've got a little bit of time to do that as well. But Tracy's gonna enter this data into the tax software. I have found that this efficiency here in and of itself alone is has saved me, I just can't even tell you how many hours of time. And Tracy will enter into LACERT and then she will sync with SmartVault it will set up their client folder. They are now in the regular tax client folder section. They are now a client of Powerful Accounting. Again, Tracy has gotten the bulk of this already set up for me, including the bank information. Tracy, is a, she is a real detail-oriented person. So I know that she's gonna get that information in there and she's gonna get it in there right. Is she gonna ever make a mistake? Yup. Would I make a mistake? Yup stuff happens but at the end of the day the efficiency of allowing her to enter this data into uh lacert is key here she is she syncs lacert and smart vault automatically creating the folders that's our process because we do tax prep you can do the smart vault folders from financial sense if you don't use tax and you're not a tax preparer 
And we're going to talk more about these folders in a little bit, but you'll notice it all gets, they all get set up automatically based on our, our setup of Smart Vault. Here's a tip with Smart Vault. When you're setting up Smart Vault, let them help you. Let them help you make the decisions on how the folder should be set up. Because I will tell you something about that. When I first started with Smart Vault, I went rogue. I was a rogue psycho Smart Vault user. And I thought I, you know, I because I'm an A type personality, I want to do everything myself. And I realized that they actually know better than I do. They absolutely know better than I do. And so as we're going through, we've got the folder structure, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But you know, again, Tracy has just got this all set up. Then once she set up the folder structure, from there, you'll notice this tax upload folder. She can go ahead into Smart Vault and do a request docs. So she can either send a link to them to this tax upload folder, or we use request docs, right? Using a simple template of, hey, here's what we need from you. And the link goes out to the client. Now, I want to just mention, I want to back up for a minute. You'll notice in the beginning, what I said to you was, Tracy will talk to the client, and then she will set up the potential client folder, and she will send out that, that request to the new potential client. They have already started to utilize our tech stack from moment one. So when we get to this process, this part of the process, they already know how to do it because they've already done it once. We already saw that they were successful uploading their tax return for us, sending us their tax return. So we know when we get to this point, we don't have to worry about teaching them because they've already learned in that first interaction with Tracy. And again, that's just so powerful. All right. So thinking about your efficiency, how much more efficient do you think your tax workflow, and if you're not a tax preparer, that's okay too, but how much more efficient, just watching some of this as you're looking or we'll launch that poll, how much more efficient do you think your tax workflow can be just by watching the simple beginning process of onboarding a new tax client? You think you can be much more efficient? Do you think you're at maximum efficiency? I even myself still don't think I'm at maximum efficiency. I'm always working on how more and more I can be efficient. Some of you may be probably more efficient if you use new tools. So uh, just, just again, I just want to get a feel for, as you just watched just the beginning of this, how are you feeling? Like, are you feeling you can be more efficient or you're already killing it? And you might, you might be more efficient than I am and good for you. I always tell people, listen, I'm just telling you how I work doesn't mean that I know everything, but it's working pretty darn good for me because I'm able to still do a ton of tax work during softball season. That's, you see how I said that? I do a lot of tax work during softball season because it's softball season and I don't miss practice. I don't miss spring break. I don't miss things because I've created an efficient workflow with the right tools, by the way, with the correct tools I need to be as efficient and productive as possible. So I'm going to close this poll in five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. And it looks like, you know, if you look at the polling results, it looks like the majority of you are how much more efficient? 58% of you say you could be much more efficient and 41%. This is a huge poll right here, guys. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we're going to be able to hopefully get you to see how much more efficient you can be by utilizing the right tools. Now, client communications, everybody, secure 2.0, hello, having a wisp, not getting documents by email, no, 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 making sure that your clients know how to work with you is critical. Create yourself a client communication policy. Make it be part of your first initial engagement, okay? How are we gonna communicate? Well. We use Lysio for communicating client with client communications. Why? We had uh, we had our email go down uh, during the extension season, and we were able to communicate with people through Lysio. If we hadn't had Lysio as a tool, we were in pretty big trouble because we weren't. We'd have to be calling people, and who wants to do that, right? We are going to be eliminating emails entirely. We're working through it. it. It takes clients some a little bit of time to adapt and adopt, but we're working on it really hard. We also send initial invitations to Smart Vault when we onboard the clients, like I told you before. But how are you going to communicate? They're either going to utilize Financial Sense to get documents, they're going to use Lysio or Smart Vault or a combination. But no, telling them, we will not accept, 
putting that in your email signature. We do not accept documents through email. Do not email them to us. We will not accept them. And that's the law. That's not even just Don Brolin's, you know, the way I want to work. It's a rule. That's the way we have to do it. So as we move forward here, thinking about a safe and secure and seamless way to work with your clients. Have you ever had a client call you or email you and say, hey, I need a copy of my tax return. Can you email it over to me? The answer to that is no. The answer to that is absolutely not. I don't even care about putting a, a, a tax return in an email that is quote unquote password protected. I'm not doing that. I need a place like Smart Vault where somebody's gonna refinance their home. They need copies of their W-2s, copies of their tax returns. I need, a, I need to be able to just send them a link and say, hey, here you go, go into Smart Vault. I know you know how to use Smart Vault because you uploaded your tax return the first time we talked. Don't tell me you can't use it because I'm not gonna jeopardize my practice because somebody wants to tell me how they wanna work with me. And that's why it's so important, okay? So <clears throat> I just wanna answer, Don's got a great question in here, thank you. Smart Vault is not like financial sense. Smart Vault is a permanent document storage, document retention, document retrieval tool. Financial Sense is a workflow tool where you set up your work and your how you're going to work in the workflow, what the status is of a tax return is right in Financial Sense. Hey, I, I have a view in Financial Sense that tells me, hey, here are the tax returns that are ready to start. Because during softball season, when I have to do tax returns, I go into smart uh, Financial Sense and I look in there, all right, what returns need to get done before I go to practice? That's my mindset every single day. OK, and so for, for Smart Vault, uh, we, we're utilizing that for retaining, um, obtaining documents because we've been using it since 2011. Does that mean Financial Sense isn't a good tool to retrieve documents from? No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is my process, the way we've been doing it works great. But if a client, for whatever reason, can't, you know, isn't uploading or whatever, they're going to use Lysio or they could use Financial Sense. But we've been using Smart Vault for so long. But don't be confused that Financial Sense uh, is the same as Smart Vault because Financial Sense is a workflow tool. Smart Vault is a document retention, retrieval, and storage tool. And it is the best on the market, period, for safe and secure uh, document storage. So do you have a structured folding folder system? And I'm not talking about necessarily Smart Vault, but do you have, launch the poll, a structured folder system that has integrations available. Citrix ShareFile, that's not going to be the case when it comes to, especially for tax people, okay? So do you use a paper filing system? Don't be embarrassed. There are people who are still using paper filing systems. Don't be embarrassed. I have a folder system, but it's not organized. A lot of times I use many different solutions and yes, everything here is perfect, good for you. That means you're using SmartFault. I can already read into that question or that answer. I would think anyway. So again, thinking about how that all works. Um, all right, so I, I'm just looking at a question as you go through. So just answer that poll, because again, I'm, I'm just curious how many of you have a structured folder system and do that doesn't integrate, because you gotta have both. So it looks like, we'll, we'll count this down real quick here. It looks like the majority of you have answered, so I'm getting a good feel for you guys. I have, half of you are using many different solutions. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. I'm going to close this down in five, four, three, two, and one. We're going to close this poll and I want to share them so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, 6%. We can fix you. No problem. I have a folder system, but it's not organized. We got you here. I'm going to show you the folder structure here in a minute. I use many different solutions. We got to fix that. And good for you, people. Everything is perfect here. Good for you. I love that. Now, as I, as I go back here, I'm gonna close, hide these results and I bring back up my screen here. Uh, Navindra, if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I'm trying to say people's uh, names correctly because that's respect. And you asked if you can briefly unpack why your firm, why your firm uses Financial Sense in Lysio. Lysio is not a workflow tool. Lysio is a communication tool. So Lysio will allow you to SMS, text message clients. It will allow you to send a task over to them if you wanted to. <clears throat> for me, the primary use for Lysio is communicating. I want to be able to communicate and I don't want them to have my cell phone number ever, ever, ever. I don't want my staff to give out their cell phone numbers. 
because people will call and text you whenever they want to not happening. So financial sense is all about how you, the status of projects and how you're working through things, information about your client, like their EIN, what accounting solution do they use? What are they on payroll? What are, what do they hear? All this information. And then what is the status of their projects? That's what financial sense is for. Lysio is all about communicating. Okay. So just wanted to make sure I cleared that up for you. Okay. Streamlined folder structure. That's why I asked that last question. Really critical. Why? If you have staff, if you have staff, you want to make sure people know where to get stuff. You want to know where to get stuff. So look at this folder structure here. Okay. For those of you who are in bookkeeping, which we are, we're in bookkeeping and we're in tax. So having a bookkeeping folder structure that is the same, what will not be the same, if you look at bank statements, the bank, the bank accounts. So bank accounts will never be the same. They're going to be Chase account ending in the last four digits of that account. And we put, is it a checking account? Is it a savings account? We also have loan and document statements. Um, all of our onboarding docs and registrations land in that bookkeeping folder. So those are CP575s or those are um, maybe their, well, the engagement letter is in there. All those kind of things, permanent storage for all of that stuff. But the more consistent your bookkeeping folder structure is, everyone's gonna, the naming of the documents themselves, we actually have a structure for that. That's how crazy we are because we want the bank statements to be in month order, alphabetical, if you will. 01, 31, 2023, 02, 28, 2023, so that they're in order. Because if I'm just looking for the last bank statement, maybe I'm doing some kind of analysis of the bank statement, I wanna be able to just jump right to that statement, not have to read the name of the document. Like that sounds really silly, but I'm, I promise you, it makes you more efficient. On the tax side, every tax client is set up the same we want to make sure we have a power of attorney and license folder now i put a one before it because i want it first because we know the p it's going to be at the bottom i always want the power of attorneys at the top it's just my preference the way i want it again but every single client has it the same i want for all of my tax my depreciation schedule asset acquisition and disposals are all put permanently in there now they may end up in the bookkeeping folder and in the tax folder i don't care asset acquisition and disposal for the bookkeeper to make the journal entries, but she also knows you've got to put it in the permanent tax folder structure as well, because we want to have it all in one place. Then you'll notice the prior year data folder for your tax folder, that's coming from that for potential client folder. Tracy transfers everything into the prior year data. So if I ever want to refer back to that prior year return, that initial return, I can go ahead and do that. And I have, again, all fully in the folder structure, really powerful. So as you think of when I asked that question, it was important to me to tell you this, this is how your folder, I'm not saying it needs to be exactly like mine, but if you don't have a folder structure, steal mine. It works, it makes sense, okay? And that's the way it should be at the end of the day. And Don, great question. Do I use a CRM like Salesforce? No, I don't. I actually use financial sense for that. And we have a tag for potential clients in financial sense. So as we go through, and then we untag them when they become a client, or we'll tag them as not a client, no, you know, never signed up, wasn't a client, but we still keep their information in case they ever call back again. And so we don't use Salesforce. And oh, Don, I also want to keep in mind for you, um, one of my keys, right, is that um, I want to be consistent and I want to have all the data at my fingertips at all time. And so. Uh, one of the other key things that we do for the uh, the main contact data for our clients is all going to be in financial sense. And we just absolutely love that uh, ability to have it all in there. Um, so Tammy, great question. I store all of my documents. Every single document is in SmartVault. Nothing, we, I don't even have a server. I use a hosting solution. So imagine that my hosting solution is my server. And I'm going to tell you a little story about that. I was with a hosting solution and they got comp they were compromised and the data was basically a lot of the data was lost and so if i had stored my data on let's call it that server i would be out, i would have been out of business everything was in smart vault so we we were not disrupted because we kept everything in smart vault but other people who are utilizing that hosting solution or even just imagine your own server if you have a server in your office 
that data was gone. And so we just want to be, we want to make sure that we never go out of business. I think that's my choice. But Don, what I wanted to say also is that we're only a, a firm of three, okay? Smart Vault can work with Drake, Sof Drake software, Lynn. You're going to use the Smart Vault PDF driver and the inbox to you to do that. So the answer is really Smart Vault can work with any system. Uh, because if you can print to PDF, they've got a driver that you can print to. You can print to your map drive, like Don asked before. You can absolutely do that as well. So I like to answer some of those questions as we go. Okay. And really at the end of the day, guys, as we start to get towards wrapping this up, it's time to take control. Take control over your folder structure. Take control over your inter integrated systems. Take control of making sure you have a project management workflow tool to help you, even if you're a sole prop, somebody like, but I'm only myself. Well, you still gotta organize yourself you still got to store the documents and the stuff you're working on, right? But, I, and I certainly do encourage you, if you are a sole prop, get yourself a part-time admin. Get somebody that can do the client facing. Find somebody really nice. Like, I found somebody nicer than me because it's, you know, I want, I want the best person to forward face my clients. Be, take the time right now to, take, to get the right technology set up and get yourself set up for success. That's the key. Success for what is up and coming. Okay, now here's another little piece that I want to I want to make sure we talk about with Smart Vault is a DocuSign integration, e-signature. Lots of tools have e-signature. Even Lysio has an e-signature tool, but because of the way I use my tax workflow, I wouldn't do this any other way. I wouldn't use Link. I don't use Link because Link is not a permanent document storage solution. I have clients storing their wills, their um, investment information, their life insurance and all that stuff. So that in the event that something happens, the family isn't searching for everything. That's a huge value add that you can give to your clients. But the e-signature, huge savings. What will happen is when you're done with your tax return, you're going to print the 8879 to Smart Vault, which by the way, again, with the CERT and Pro Series, it's a direct. If you're using Drake or uh, any other kind of any other software you're just going to use the smart vault pdf driver not a big deal or a map drive no problem but for here because i've got lacert and it syncs directly i'm in the screen here in what's called the connected desktop it's a cool <coughs> excuse me a cool desktop app that that kind of sits in your environment and what's going to happen is you print that 8879 you'll notice the top circled 8879 that has not been signed yet. I've just printed that. Now, when I highlight that 8879, you're going to notice as you move up, your eyes move up to the box at the top, says get signature. That's going to become bold when I single click on that PDF. When I click, when I click on get signature, it's going to automatically launch DocuSign. It's going to drop in their signature forms. And when they sign it, you get an alert that they've signed it, number one. Number two, you'll notice at the bottom there, the second uh, circled 8879 says signed. So it's gonna, it's gonna keep the original format of the regular 8879 and it's gonna automatically put it back into Smart Vault. Now for you Drake user, you can still, this works for you. This will work for you to get your 8879s uh, completed right from Smart Vault from the connected desktop. So don't think that you'll never touch those documents twice. I mean, that's just a home run from efficiency. So I'm gonna launch this last polling question here for y'all. Would you like to learn about Smart Vault or, and or financial sense? And really at the end of the day, <clears throat> I'm telling you right now, this workflow tools of financial sense with the workflow and Smart Vault with the permanent document storage, the ability of consistency, efficiency, productivity, and ultimately profitability is what you want. I want you all to say from now on, it isn't tax season, it's softball season where we prepare tax returns or we do bookkeeping because it's softball season. That's what I'm trying to help everybody start saying as opposed to tax season. So um, one of the things that, yeah, so Amanda, great question. And that's something that we can follow up on and how we're using Lysio for sure. Um, yes, the 8879 tool with DocuSign rocks, right? Uh, the interface, you just pop it up. Um, does it go um, so don i'm just trying to answer your question here bud but then does that interface pop up yes so you're just you're going to open up the connected desktop find your client which is a really easy way to do that you just type in their name 
and it comes up, you click and it goes. It's just, it's again, it's so amazing. Okay, so great question, Skip. Is SmartVault get e-signature better than Lacert e-signature? And the only reason I'm telling you yes is because I don't want to have to go into the Lacert e-signature, grab the document and stick it in the permanent doc storage because here's the thing. We may have to reference those 8879s at some point. The fact that we have everything that had to do with that tax return in one place, source documents, your work papers, okay, your work papers, all that stuff is in one place. In with, with the e-signature, with LACERT, you're just getting the e-signature or you're using link. Everything is not stored in there. And so it, it's tougher for the client to be able to, to be able to maneuver. And I for me again, I this has been working so rocking for us and we love it, right? Yes, awesome, Stefani. Yup, excited for this season with the fact that SmartFall is now integrating. We love it. Uh, yes, you will get a copy, Marie. They're, they're gonna send you guys the recording of this webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. Looks like most of you have answered. I'll give you, a, no, I'll leave it up here for a second while I answer some of these questions, but make sure you answer the poll, people. This is, this is audience participation at its best right here, right? So. Oh, great, Randall. I love that. Um, you've got SmartFault in, in Financial Sense due to my recommendation. That's great. And I love that because I'm telling you right now, we are absolutely killing it. Now, I don't know what SmartPath is, Buck, but whatever it is, if it can print, if it, if you can print out of it, it will integrate with SmartVault, meaning that you can print it into a drive, into the SmartVault drive for sure. Uh, really exciting stuff. Um, my system is fully cloud-based. I say yes, Randall, because I'm in a hosting solution. I use LACERT. LACERT is a desktop tax software, but I, I host it in a hosting environment. And so, yes, ultimately, I'm on my MacBook right now in a hotel room, and I can get into LACERT from here because I use a hosting solution. So as far as I'm concerned, cloud-based means you can work from anywhere, and you bet your bottom dollar I can do it, right? My folder file structure, yes, absolutely. Again, um, we can share the slides out, whatever it is, we can, when we follow up, we can share the slides so you can see the, how that structure works. Um, and that's really exciting stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead uh, and close this poll here. So if you have any answer, jump in here, let's go. 100% audience participation, people. Let's make it happen. I'm gonna close this poll down in five no come on you're almost there we're at 92 percent just answer the question it's not hard i'm going to answer the question uh close this poll in five four three two and one all right we're going to go ahead and close that poll and now let me pull back up my deck here because i want you to go and book your demo because book a demo with SmartVault. you're going to get 50 percent off onboarding and migration do it get your demo They'll help you with your folder structure. You'll get all of this stuff. They'll they'll copy my folder structure for you if you want. I, I'm pretty sure I'm making promises. I don't know if I can keep, but I'm pretty sure Alex would be cool with that if she was here with me. Uh, but please set, set up that demo, get it done. Do it now. Do it now because the, the days are going to go by, the holidays are going to come, and you do not want to be in tax season next year without financial sense or smart fault when you're just trying to keep your head above the water. All right. Now, here's the opportunity you want to register with Dawn's Dugout. You just go to dawnbrolin.com. You'll see Dawn's Dugout on there. I do this once a month. Why? For people like you. Why am I doing it? A lot of you had questions I probably didn't get a chance to answer and I want to answer them. It's a one hour live Q&A, collaborate with other people. We, it's just an, a Zoom. You can only get in if you register and we just talk about this stuff. You want to learn more about Lysio? You want to learn more about finance? You want me to show you some stuff? I can do that uh, in that, in that um, dugout. So it's Dawn's dugout again, not tax season, softball season people. So feel free, register, connect with me. Would love to follow up with you guys more uh, as we go through here, but I really appreciate you guys all being here. Otherwise I'd be talking to myself, which would be really boring. Apologize for a few coughs here and there. But at the end of the day, I really wish every single one of you the best upcoming season than you've ever had before. I want you to make money. I want you to fill your buckets. I want you to fill dumpsters of cash and make money because you're more efficient and you're set up properly for a successful season. I wish you all the best from the absolute bottom of my soul. You can't click the bottom, uh, the demo button. Don't worry about it. Go to dawnbrolin.com. It's on there. We, we're here for you. 
We want to see you succeed. If you're going to be at QuickBooks Connect, come say hello at the Smart Vault and Financial Cent booths. Go see them. Go talk to them. Get your 50% off. Go make it happen. I wish everyone to have a great day. Thank you so much again for being here today. Take care, everybody.